on YouTube, of course. All right, guys, good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Channels Being Google Plus Hangout. And today we're looking at the Nigerian Army. There's been so much talk here and there, not about killings, well, actually, in a way, about killings, but not about Boko Haram being um, put in their own corner or where they're supposed to be put, but about some officers who were said to have mutineered against their superiors. But how justifiable is that? That's why we're here. And that's what we're here to find out. So, um, Martin, I'll start with you. You're calling from London. Yep. Yes, I am. What exactly is your take on this? What essentially, you, what you see? essentially, I believe that um, what has just the 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 sentencing of the twelve soldiers is actually a wrong decision by the military. Uh, considering the kind of situation and circumstances those officers have found themselves. You don't just um, sentence soldiers for mutiny because of just because of rebellion. I understand the importance of rebellion in the military and in terms of trying to um, protect the central government in particular because this is a country where um, there has been coups and counter coups and the result of those schools, I mean, the, the reason for those schools has always been the fact that we have a weak government, an irresponsive government, um, a government that is torn between ethnic and religious lines, corruption and all that. If you look at the image on Zogu um, and the um, Zogu coup in 1965, uh, you realize that it was the same reason why they had a coup. I mean, looking at the kind of circumstances that we found ourselves, is it was a situation they found themselves earlier. And you look at the coup in in June 1966 again, it was the kind of situation they also found themselves. And then if you look at all other coups that follow, what the the military always says is that we have a government who is corrupt, a government that is divided between ethnic lines and religious lines. We have a country that is polarized and weak and all that. So the, 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 the military at every given point in time wants to seize the opportunity to come in. You know. Uh, so the, knowing this, it is very important and crucial at this point for the military to send strong signals you know, across board to say that, look, we will not tolerate any form of irresponsibility and indiscipline. But then there is a level with which you can actually send such a message. You don't send a message that is disproportionate. If you do that, then you're going against the law itself. So what the military has done by sentencing these 12 soldiers to death is actually a disproportionate measure to just to 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 to, to a reaction um, that is actually not their fault. You know. Can you hear me? Yeah, um, I can hear you. All right, um, and thank you. And okay, we do um have someone new. Well, like I said before we started, I'm Kunle Alabi will join us fully. Thanks for joining the hangout here in Glasgow, um, in um Scotland. But then before I come to you, Kunle, can you hear me? Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, so I'll come back to you. But then just before I do that, um, let me still stay in London and come to you, Carol. Um. You just heard um, Martin's um, perspective on this um, sentencing of 12 soldiers to death. And don't forget, we have about 97 who are been, are been are, are waiting. They're quite online now, and there's a court martial that will take place. So there might be more numbers. It might not stop at 12. More might be sentenced to death for mutiny, for absconding, for housebreaking, and for um, disorderly behavior. What do you think about that? First of all, let's let's be clear. Um, mutiny in the in the army is wrong. It's against the law, and um, the chief of defense staff, Alex Bade, said um, in in the in, in the laws, if you, if you if you commit mutiny, then um, the the consequence is death. And um, I think that's the basis that the um, Nigerian army has used to say, okay, we're going to sentence them to death because um, of mutiny. But then let's let's now look at the real issue because why did that why did the, the, the soldiers um, um, mutiny against the army? Why did they go against the laws? Why did they go against their superiors or authorities? And um, in Nigeria, we are sort of like used to um, we we ignore the underlying issues, we ignore the root causes, and then we focus on fire brigade approach. 
um, these soldiers committed this um, um, the, the, um, the, this this mission because of of, of of a reason, and then it comes back to what um, um, the guy earlier on said that why did they do this? Because obviously there's corruption. The National Assembly has said that they they spent over one trillion naira since Boko Haram started on 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 the military, and then it comes to say where did all this money go to? You can't you can't send people to go and fight something that they know or face a war that they know that they're going to lose anyway because you're, you're facing someone with a rifle and he's coming to you with, with um, APCs and, 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 um, and bombs and all that. It, it's, almost, <laughs> it's almost a lost battle. There, there's, there's, there's no two ways about it. So if these if this soldiers then see, they, they saw an oath to defend uh, Nigeria. They saw an oath to defend with all they have. But then they didn't saw an oath just to go and die um, and put themselves and, and say, okay, shoot me. You, you're facing someone with a rifle for Christ's sake. And the military, as, as reports and, and things that have been coming out, the, the, the weapons and, and, and the equipment they use are the equipment that they bought, bought in the 80s, in the days of Shagari. And then that, that's like 30 years ago. You can't be using what um, the, the weapons you used 30 years ago to find today's battle. And that's just not right. So trying to say, okay, yes, they committed mutiny, therefore they're going to die. That's wrong. And it just comes to say that the Nigerian laws are like... Um, the spider's cobweb. They, they, they catch only little insects and while um, the, the big birds just fly through easily. Um, it was in this same country that we had the Minister of Interior who, who conducted an I, uh, NIS uh, scam, I would say, not even, not even a recruitment exercise, it was a scam and he's still a minister, nothing has happened to him. Um, it was in this same country that, that people in, in high places have done things and they are still where they are, nothing has happened to them. So it is only the little people, the, the, the little insects that, that get to suffer for, for, for things in Nigeria. Don't get me wrong, mutiny is wrong, yes we know that, but then we need to look at the underlying issue, the cause, why did they do it? I mean, it's, it, it's corruption, it's, it's, that, it's down to them not being paid right and, and all other things. So those are the things that we need to look at. I'm very glad that um, lawyers like Olisa Bakoba and um, Femi Fallon has taken up, have, have taken up the case um, um, in defense of, 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 the, of, the, of, the, of these people that, that, that have been sentenced to death and those that are still waiting for um, I say to be sentenced now. All right. Um, well, let's hope um, the lawyers who have taken up this case, you know, um, excel or succeed in trying to um, seek or get justice for um, these persons that um, are under or have been sentenced to death. But again, just before I continue, Joachim Makebong joins us. He's calling from Lagos. Um, and also, Godi Wogu joins us. He's in Prague in the Czech Republic. But um, guys, just before I come to you, let me come to you now. Um, 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 Olumuiwa. Two persons have spoken, and you know they've made their case quite clear. But do you agree with them or not? Well, um, I, I think we we should look at the whole issue from two particular perspectives. The the army generally, as an institution, is reputed or I mean known to to operate based on irrational laws. Um, irrational laws that are subject to the um, interpretation of the persons who belong to that institution. So if the army as an institution, um, generally speaking, take a position um, within the confines of a layman argument, I think it would sound very, very absurd. I think it would sound very rational. I think it would sound very disproportionate. And I think that's how this one sounds. I, I quite understand exactly what it means um, for a soldier to be charged, or, I mean, or alleged, or prosecuted for, for mutiny, um, they, they are irrational laws. And I think that when you're hindering the military service, one of the very first things you should know, or you probably are made aware of, is that um, this is an institution that wouldn't um, tolerate um, in discipline. That said, um, that's within the confines of what should happen in very normal or very sane societies. In the Nigerian society is a different body mentality. If it was an American soldier that commits mutiny, I'm so sure, I'm so certain that um, the military institution would, would throw the part of honor and discipline that person because it would be said that the American government as an institution has provided everything the, the soldier needs to deliver. So if the soldier fails to deliver, then that will be running contrary to the oath he or she swore to. That's how normal societies operate. Or if a soldier commits, is being charged of mutiny in Nigeria, then you must understand the underlying factor, I mean, um, that necessitated that, that old protest. And that's where I fought the Nigerian army, because if you haven't given me the right resources to, to deliver on my promises, then I cannot 
to be held responsible for, for misbehaving. And I think that it will be unfair within the confines of um, the templates that those guys were allowed to operate and within the resources that were provided for them, it will be unfair for the military to then want to enforce the stiffest penalty in disciplining them. So I, I fought the army in that regard. I think the Nigerian army, if anybody's going to be charged for mutiny, the, the first person who should be charged for mutiny should be the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, which is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, for failing his responsibilities to take care of his armed forces. I mean, you cannot discipline somebody, I mean, fr from the bottom. Discipline is supposed to be thorough breed. It should be, I mean, all encompassing. You have the commander-in-chief who hasn't done what he should do by protecting his armed, for his armed forces from, from unnecessary attacks. You have the chief of defense staff who, with all due respect, doesn't appear to understand the callings or the, the essentials of his job. And you have a military that is, that's in itself is in, in disarray, an institution that is so, so immersed in corruption, and the same canker worm that's eaten deep into our fabric as a nation, you cannot then begin to sanction young boys uh, or perhaps individuals from the rank and file for protesting that their, their lives are not being protected. So I disagree totally that those guys shouldn't be, I mean, shouldn't have um, had that stiff penalty. But that, that said also, I also think that um, we must be able to strike a balance between what is right and what is not right. Even if you do have um, grievances, I sincerely think that there, there could have been better ways for those guys to have gone about it. So what I would advocate wouldn't be um, um, a dealt penalty or, not, or, the, or the, 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 the penalty to be upheld. I would advocate that um, this penalty should be lessened. I, I think that it would do well if those, if those guys are dismissed and probably asked to go to go on compulsory I mean, retirement or perhaps sent to jail for three, four, five years. That would still be fair. So that I could at least be able, we could at least be able to send that uh, message to people who are watching, and then we don't have a repeat of that. But if the military insists that these guys must be killed, then it shouldn't be those young men alone that should go down. It should start from the commander in chief who should resign. If he cannot resign, the chief of um, defense staff and all his uh, military chiefs needs, needs to be disciplined also because it takes two people to tangle. I, I cannot be held responsible for an offense that was jointly committed. If you didn't protect me, you cannot expect me to, to defend myself. But I all said, um, let me not repeat myself, I think that in the final analysis, that verdict wouldn't stand. As, as um, detached as the military appear to be from Nigerian society, the military as an institution is subservient to the laws of the Federation. And this is a, is a, is a, it's a, it's a case that would go to, to the civil courts, and I'm confident it will, be, it will be quashed. So in the end, the army would just have succeeded in making mockery of itself. Though those guys might lose their job, but that would be fair enough if they are not killed. So, so I, I think it's an harsh judgment coming from a system that didn't do the right thing, and I think it wouldn't stand the test of time. All right. Well, just like you said, it wouldn't stand the test of time, but then we have to wait and see if it will or will not. But then let me come back to Kune Alari. Kune, you're in Glasgow in Rangers. Um, I said Rangers. I'm so obsessed with Rangers Football Club. I'm so sorry, guys. But then um, Kune... Yeah. There, there were supposed to be, or there were other ways that they could have registered their grievances against their commander or the Nigerian army, but they didn't. They actually decided to go to register it in a different way, and it has landed them where they are at the moment. Though we hear um, legal practitioners have taken over their cases and they're standing strong to make sure that that sentence is reduced or even um, cancelled entirely. But then, what would you make of the whole situation? Yes, uh, I, uh, I have to uh, agree with some of the speakers that have spoken before. And, and this is the fact that um, anything that has to do with um, Nigeria, there's always the so-called Nigerian factor to ways things are being handled. Well, I think like some of the speakers are spoken that it is wrong for soldiers to mutiny because they understand the implications of their actions. But like some of the things that I've already said, which I won't like to repeat, like the way the Nigerian military has already handled the its operations against Boko Haram and some other elements that they are fighting against. So we can see that there are a lot of factors that are playing in the military and that even the Nigerian society, the people, don't really have that trust because we are, there are being a lot of allegations of corruption, allegations of ethnic, you know, 
um, bigotry and some other things like that that have really undermined the operations of, 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 of the military. So in the light of this, so it, it would be wrong that these, these people are, 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 are sentenced to death and the death sentence is being carried out. I think as a yesterday or something, the European Court of Justice passed a, um, yes, uh, uh, released a, a, a press order saying that um, that it was wrong because, like, you know, when it has to come to the field of human rights, the way people have been also have to, you know, try to be judged according to natural justice and uh, um, values of human Right, so they said that death, death sentence is wrong. So I think at the end of the day, um, being the way Nigerian military is now because of so-called Nigerian factors that some of the speakers have, have already enumerated, which of course could be based on ethnic, bigotry, or corruption, and other factors like that, that could have, you know, prompted these uh, 12 soldiers to to have revolted, you know, against the military. And it was even through their revolt that we were able to see some of the things uh, happening then and to see, um, because I was on reading in the newspaper where I saw that um, there was a particular general that was caught martial because the general ran into the bush when, you know, Boko Haram, People when they were attacking, you know, Boko Haram. So this is quite, it's quite funny. How do you expect a, a, a general of Nigerian army? The Nigerian army has been so respected, you know, you know, like like a lot of peacekeepings that Nigerians have handled in the past that have you know, gained inspiration of the world, even the United States Army. But you know, because of the Sinan rule and because we know that the military are has been the mind because of the fear that it might take over the government. So I think there are a lot of things that have to be done. So in the light of all this, like some of the speakers have really pointed out that there is some other kind of mention whereby soldiers being we are so just noting it that there be some other severe punishment that could impose, provided there are you know, things are going on normal because like some of what the well, we, can't, we can't hear you. You're, you're going down. You think your, your, your audio is quite going low. It's not much. Hello. Yeah, okay, we can hear you now, but your audio is quite low. Okay, so, so while, you, while you sort that out... Yeah. I think... Okay, go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes, please. Okay. So, like, if there have been some other countries, top countries that are involved in this kind of thing, nobody will have raised their eyebrows. So I think... He, it's not that it's, it's wrong because it's the law for the military, but in the case of this Nigerian factor that some of the things have mentioned, the death sentence should be all that of uh, um, so that to deter some other people that might want to do the same thing in the near future. That has been my own that's my own um, okay, um he made mention of certain things, but um, I'll just let um, Godi Wogu to to respond to some of the things you said. Um, Godi, good afternoon. Uh, you're calling from Ukraine, but just before I do that, we have Fidelis on Ireland. Um, Fidelis is calling from, oh, well, he didn't state where he's calling from, but um, Ireland is in the Ukraine. Um, so, guys, thanks for joining the Hangout, and we'll come back to you guys in a bit. Um, but um, okay, Joachim was actually moving, roaming to get um, a space. Um, Joachim, I think he's settled now. Um, I'll come to you, Gordy, after Joachim. Um, but let's just hear Joachim. Um, Kunle raised some issues, you know. He talked about um, the laws. I mean, he talked about the EU and other stuff. 
But then the EU condemning this and talking about human rights in the Constitution, I mean, I don't know if that will supersede what is in the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Yes, human rights violations, we understand. But then, where does the supremacy of the Nigerian Constitution come in? Joachim. Okay. Um, I want to just be sure that you people can hear me, first of all. Can you hear Pardon? me? Can you come again? Yeah, I can hear you Can now. you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can. You see, the, all, all, all they can do uh, is, to, is to offer their own opinions on, um, on certain issues. Of course, it is Nigerians that will, that will determine how, how the case will go and what, and what kind of uh, sentences are going to be given. So I, I think that they are, they are, of course, entitled to their own opinion and they're entitled to give it. But, you know, I don't, I don't think that will affect the way, the way um, or rather, like you said, like you asked, rather, it doesn't, it doesn't become more superior to, to how we do our things here or, or the messages that we want to pass. So oh, okay. they, they, okay. they've said, they, they said what they want to say and then that's for them. All right, so um, Kone also raised issues about the, um, the admiration the Nigerian army has had over the years on the African continent and even you know, in global terrain. But then it was reported that um, a colonel, actually, not a general, and his troops ran into the bush when Boko Haram and their crew, their members, were attacking. What has gone yeah. wrong? What has happened? I mean, what has happened to this respect and admiration? Again, They're running. Again. Again, I think I think it, it just that that issue just serves to highlight the kind of things that we are dealing with here. Um, the truth is, while while there have been some gains made against the terrorists in in, in other areas, you know, some of the stories that you hear uh, make it feel like we are simply unprepared, unprepared for them, and and it really just highlights the problems that we are facing in trying to police our borders. So if a colonel, if a colonel and his people can simply, you know, take off at the site of invaders, then uh, then you have to then he puts he puts what happened with with the with the with the with the other with the soldiers uh, who have been who have been found guilty of mutiny, he puts it into a lot of context. He tells you the kind of thing that we are dealing with here. Um, so I don't know. In in some parts there is good news. In other parts, you know, not so good news. Not so good news at all. Um, okay, Joachim. Um, let me just move to um. I'll come back to you, but let me move to um. Godi, Godi. Um, but then just before I move to Godi, let me also remind that um, of course the chat box is there and the rule still remains the same. <coughs> if you have any um, observations you want to make or you have um, a dissenting view from what a uh, speaker is you know, saying, you can put that in the chat box and then we'll also deal with that as the um, Hangout continues. But in the meantime, um, Gordy, how do you make of that? I mean, our troops are now running. The first time, what we heard was that they made a tactical maneuver into Cameroon, right? Yeah. And now, openly run away, as reported. What has happened? I mean, we are the giants of Africa. We have an army. I mean, we, we are we are supposed to be a country who has the best ground troops, as, as has been reported again. But what has happened? Why are we running? Why are we backing out? What exactly is the problem? And where is it coming from? OK, thank you. And good afternoon, everyone. I think um, they, the soldiers are running because they have realized that the power, or they don't have the superior might to fight the, the, the terrorists. I saw a video which was shared on Facebook recently by a friend, and um, it was showing how the um, the weaponry, the arsenal that the Boko Haram had in their possession, and then um, showing the, how they were, have been, they were shooting. And I saw at the end of the video, I saw like you know some soldiers who were like climbing the hills and running. I think one of them already had a bullet shot on him and um, running away. Um, this actually highlights some of the things that a lot of people already know, that these guys have a lot of weapons that the military are not able to fight back in this period. And then the, the, the most flabbergasting thing or crazy thing about it is that the, the top, the, the, the leadership of the army 
keeps coming up with this cock and bull story, tactical maneuver or no tactical maneuver. The fact remains that these guys, the, the young men and who are out there fighting, have seen that they really are not well equipped. It's the same thing that has been said over and over again, that these people have a lot of weapons, how they get them, how they are able to overtake a military cantonment and acquire some of these armored cars and, you know, rockets, propellers and, you know, the things we saw or we see in the videos. It becomes, you know, another question. Um, but I, I just want to go a little bit onto the topic about the, the guys who are facing mutiny charges. I think this is the first time where a lot of Nigerians are, for once, crying for the disregard, end quote, of the law in this situation. Because we cannot uh, say you throw the baby away with the bad, bad water or something like this, how they say it. Um, yes, they did, um, but they did something which is against the law, against the army law. And um, they are actually, there are rules and ways how to deal with it. But uh, and, uh, looking at it, this is a time when the leadership of the country is supposed to say, okay, yes, these guys shouldn't really die. Um, we saw a video recently about some young army or um, Air Force officer who was beheaded, but uh, was captured and beheaded. And these are the things that really demoralizes people or demoralizes their colleagues who are out there fighting because they see these things, they hear those things. And the question is, is that what is next for us? So should I find myself in this situation? What is going to happen? And we've never heard the authority come out and say, give offer words of encouragement, either to the family members or to foes of these people who have been murdered this way. They keep denying that, oh, the video is not, you know, we don't, the guy who is in the, who was killed in the video is an imposter. I saw that comment somewhere. That is not, a, is not one of us. But these things and the people who are colleagues to these guys, they, they are reading this information. We think that they are just busy, just fighting. Some of them actually have access to the information and they see these things. So I think that we are really, really getting this war, the fight uh, of this um, war. We are getting it wrong. And I, I don't know what the people at the top there are thinking. If we look at the cases, you know, what has happened and stuff like that. Um, Americans, a case, for example, um, Bradley Manning, I don't know if some of us remember his case, who actually was um, sold the secret, um, army secret. Yes, he was um, penalized according to the law, but then a lot of people, you know, wading into the matter, and his sentence, you know, were kind of, you know, um, reduced. We had the president, uh, Obama said things, stuff like that. Uh, the whole country, the United States, you know, a lot of people were saying because this guy made people to be aware that there is, the government is spying against them. You know, there are some of things which are happening which is not supposed to happen. We can situate some of that to what is happening at this moment. These guys are going to die because they protested against what they believe was right at that moment. Should we go back and kill them? If we kill them, what is the difference between the Boko Haram killing them and the, our own military killing them? There is no much difference. So I think that all these things with the tactical maneuvering around, because the guys who are out there laying their lives out there, most of them are tired. Have we set up a kind of rehabilitation and you know, reconciliation committee? We see that what happens is some people, Americans, they go to war in Iraq or Afghanistan. They have like, you know, um, how many more tour of duty or call of duty? And they come back and they, you know, they try to rehab, they try to help them to get back into the system. We have our own guys who are fighting endlessly and there's nothing to really support their cause for the nation. So we have to really think about this in this way, that we cannot win this war if we are killing our own people. Because the guys who are out there, they sat together, ate together, slept together, trained together, you know, fought together with these young men. And they are just going to watch them die. I don't know how it's going to, you know, motivate them more to go and fight without them having another tactical maneuver to Cameroon or to Chad as the case may be. Um, well, um, I, I hope we don't have that kind of situation, and I hope that we face God, them God, head on. But then, um, just in continuing, um, Ireland, I'll be coming to you. Ireland, you're in Ukraine. Um, I guess you're a first-time caller on this um, hangout. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? 
Okay, we can't hear you, Ireland. We still can't hear you. Hello, Ireland. Can you hear me? Okay, I guess I will have to move on. And, and now you can hear okay. me. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I can. Thank you for that, Carol. Okay, so I'm really, this is really the first time I want to thank Channels for providing this platform for Nigerians everywhere to be able, able to communicate and express their opinions. Um, so about this issue of the Nigerian soldiers who uh, a death sentence has been passed on them, I... What, what's the take on it? Huh? Do you think it's justified? Uh, well, I happen to study in a, a in Air Force Secondary School in Nigeria, and I'm quite familiar with the military code of conduct. And yes, mutiny in Nigeria is punishable by death. However, the law was made for man and not man for the law. So, you have to interpret whatever uh, sentence you pass in context with the situation. In this situation, when Nigeria is uh, conducting a war against Boko Haram, because as Nigerians, we have to just face the fact that Nigeria is at war with Boko Haram, it will be very de demoralizing for our troops, for the boys, for for our fellow, for their fellow colleagues and soldiers to be to be assassinated, basically. Because if you sentence them and kill them for fighting uh, the terrorists, then that's how the other soldiers will feel that you just killed their colleagues. Also, we have to look why did they why did they mutiny? Uh, it was it was reported several times that their senior officers were in collaboration with uh, with the Boko Haram themselves. Were, that information was being provided about the movement of the troops so that they were easily ambushed by Boko Haram, and they were also not being provided with arms. So these boys felt that they had to do something, although they were misguided, and it is definitely not acceptable, it is not right that they mutiny it, but they had their grievances. I do not believe that they should be pardoned. I believe that their sentence should be, should be light, it should be cut short, it should be a lighter sentence. Death is too heavy a sentence at this time, when Nigeria is at war, where the morale of the troops is of utmost importance. Also, about the issue of Boko Haram, I did, uh, uh, a, God mentioned the video he watched, I also watched that video and uh, I want to say it was a very, very excellent PR effort on the, on the side of Boko Haram and this is something that Nigeria is, uh, our government, they have a shortcoming in. They do not, they do not uh, market themselves, they do not use the media to their advantage. We hear there's a fight going on in, Boko Haram, uh, in the north, in uh, Bauchi State, with Boko Haram. When we hear that other countries are fighting their wars in other parts of the world, we see video footage. Nigerian army, do they not have cameramen? Is that what they are saying? Why do they not take, take give, your, give a soldier a camera, let him go with you to the war front. Show us that you are fighting the Boko Haram. Give us, again, once more, give us hope and belief in our army because everybody has been repeating that Nigeria used to be a, a number one army force. That is in the past. Boko Haram has shown Nigeria that we are no longer, our army is not to be recognized anywhere in the world. Boko Haram cannot have a ground force of more than 10,000 soldiers. How are they able to, to fight against the Nigerian army so successfully? This is, this is another issue that is very difficult to address, we cannot understand. Initially, we know that Boko Haram was a, a political, politically funded terrorist organization. But when we see what is happening today, we have to face the reality. Boko Haram is not, it's no longer just political funded. Boko Haram is a dog that has gone wild. The owner can no longer control it. I have a friend from Iraq. Unfortunately, what's, uh, we see what's going on in Iraq now. But before the present situation in Iraq, my friend saw a video about Boko Haram, I showed him. 
okay to me, we have terrorists in Iraq. But these people, what the, the weapons they have, we do not even see. These people are way too advanced. And I agree with him that Boko Haram at this point is now an internationally funded terrorist organization with links to, to Al Shabaab, with links to uh, to Mali, to the terrorists in Mali, with strong links to Al Qaeda. And Nigeria has to up their game. If not, it is a war that is going to be protracted. It is going to go on for years, and this is what Nigeria cannot afford at this moment. Nigeria is a country that we are at the verge of uh, moving Africa forward because as soon as Nigeria is able to move forward, Nigeria can then carry Africa along. But Boko Haram is retarding our progress. I must say to Jonathan that although he has failed us in many places, he sh this is something that he has the ability to uh, to change. He has the ability to make to provide the equipment needed by the Nigerian army. Nigerian army soldiers have proven several times before in the past that they can be up to any task. But at this point, we are not, they are not just being provided with the arms, the equipment they need. This is why the soldiers are mostly investing. Executing those soldiers is not the solution. We know that according to the military code of conduct, they need to be executed. Yes. They, the soldiers are themselves aware that if I meet if I meet a senior officer, I will be killed. They are aware, but as I said, the sentence has to be interpreted in context of the situation. Now is right. time to uh, to execute our own soldiers. And last of all, let me just uh, bring up this point that okay. uh, about the situation that Nigerian. Uh, Officials have been officials have been caught with huge sums of cash, uh, uh, trying to procure weapons. We must say that we have to also put criticism to the, the world powers like America, who have placed an M armed embargo over 20 years now on Nigeria, and they are aware of the Boko Haram situation. Uh, is this not is this not suspicious that you know that Nigeria has a big war going on, and you do not even bring up a suggestion of lifting an age-old armed embargo that was put in place because of people like Abacha and other uh, dictatorship leaders. At this point, Nigeria needs people to supply us arms in an open market. We don't even need to buy arms on the black market. Yes, I saw an of God just put up a, a comment here about uh, China and uh, Russia. If the, if the EU, if, the, if, if America will not uh, understand what is going on and and help us and leave this embargo, we have to be suspect of them that maybe they have a hand in what is going on. If war powers like America, U, uh, UK, Israel can say we are looking for 200 Boko Haram girls, yes, and they came and they could not find them, we have to wonder, something is not right. Is it possible that these people understand what is going on? These people have more information about this war and they are not, and they are not revealing the information. Is it because instability in Africa is of interest to the world powers. They do not want Africa to prosper. So, if the war in Bo if Boko Haram is going to destabilize Nigeria, I am sure there are people who will be happy in this situation. So Nigeria just has to face who is going to, whoever is willing to supply Nigeria arms, go to them. Fight this Boko Haram threat. Nigeria is bigger than this. We don't. It's not even a problem of Islam Christianity because I have so many Christian, Islamic friends. It's not a problem. I have no problem with them. Boko Haram does not speak for Islamists in Nigeria. It doesn't speak, it doesn't speak for Muslims. So at this point, we just have all to right. try to end the situation. Thank you. Uh, all right, um, Ireland. Uh, we didn't get your second name, on, but actually, um, Joachim, Caro, um, uh, and Godia, they're all addressing you as Dan Sleeky. So uh, it's best you introduce yourself properly first. Okay, my name is Ireland Anyasi. Okay, Ireland Anyasi. Thank you. But then let me just go back to the chat box before I come to you. Because at least I see you. I see you hanging on. Um, but I would say that your 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 visual is quite dark. So if you can get more lights before we come back to you. We're going to chat box now. Um, so while you were speaking in the first place, um, Carol, when you started, Carol said uh, that was apt. You made an apt opening. He agreed with some points you made. Um, and um, Joachim now said also he went back to um, Godi's comment and said, uh, "Good, uh, Godi made an important point just now about the PTSD." And then um, Godi also added that uh, if we need arms, which you already stated, uh, we can um, ask China or um, Russia to supply us arms. And he asked if you know how much a fighter plane costs. 
uh, or a helicopter, 9.3 million naira can buy those as they claim was on the shopping list. That's I'm now talking about the 9.3 million dollars and 5.7 million dollars seized in South Africa. And then um, you made a point where Joachim says um, he doesn't agree with you at all on that. He didn't specify which point exactly. I'll, I'll, I'll come to you, Joachim. You, you raised that point. Um, but Carol also doesn't um, um, agree with you on that point. But then Joachim believes we're actually derailing from why we're here, and he says, let's not leave the main topic of this hangout, which is, is um, the sentencing of those guys um, quite, um, is it just file? But then, it, there's a linkage, uh, just to, so to speak, there's a linkage between that issue of sentencing, because it has, an, it, it has a history, it has a context. I'll come back to you, Island. It has a history and it has a context, just like you said, and in a way they're intertwined, and that's why we're getting to where we are. But Island, I'm about. I'm supposed to be moving on now. You've said quite a lot, but let me just give you two seconds to to make the point you want to make right now. Two seconds, please. Okay, I'm just about to say that the Boko Haram the Boko Haram situ, situation is not isolated. The issue of these uh, soldiers is not isolated. It's a very interconnected issue, uh, issue. We cannot just address one and forget the other. That's just all right. Saying. Okay. All right. So um. Fidelis, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to come to you now. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I'm here. Um, all right, um, so good afternoon. I don't know where you are. Um, can you tell us where you are? And, uh, okay. All right, go ahead. Um, all right. Um, Concerning the anyway, uh, sorry, first of all, yeah, sure. Kindly introduce yourself to the house. Okay, my name is Fidelis. Okay, Fidelis. What's your second name? Okay, go ahead. Uh, concerning the the soldiers, uh. I can say is that uh, the sentence I'm asking but I can say yes or no. There is a there are rules in the military. And uh, all of that we do is this is the situation. Now Nigeria is at war with uh, uh, Boko Haram. This is a war on terror, and this this war has done so harm to us. In fact, this is not a time for us to to, to party around. It's a very very it's a very dark uh, moment for us <laughs> as a as a nation. The last time we had this kind of thing was during uh, the civil war, and this is the time. This Boko Haram is like a little bit uh, it's little to what happened then, but at least it's a dark moment for us. So, you know, I've heard some people saying that uh, we should. They, some people say, okay, using uh, Nigerian term, tamper justice with mercy, uh, Mr. President, to uh, please to uh, help them all. Uh, now, you know, if I'm a soldier, my uncle is a soldier, and uh, if I'm fight, if I'm a, if I'm a soldier fighting against these people, and I see that my colleague is helping Boko Haram, it's like it's, it's, this this war is like a, a, somebody who is a experiment and who is a, doing a research, and somebody is sabotaging your research. And you find out that oh, your friend is sabotaging your, your research. Me, particularly, I will slap my friend for doing such to me. So, helping Boko Haram while I'm on, uh, uh, on the battlefield, killing the same people, and you are helping them, channeling for them. But we talk about how did they get these arms? How did they get the APC they are, the they are using? How did they get the sophisticated weapon, the military uh, kind of. Uh, 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 weapons they are using. 
those people, we, are, we can also say that they are, they are gotten by uh, through those uh, those guys that committed the, uh, the offense. Now, and somebody is telling me that we should tamper justice with mercy. It's not acceptable. Truly. Now, I know that in military, they take orders. If those guys took order from the colonel, as they said, I'm talking about the one that, the one that I read today on uh, Vanguard. They took order from the from the from the colonel. If they took order from the colonel, now this this is what the, the, the military council has to do. But what they should do is to investigate, make sure that those guys are they taking order from the colonel or are they part are they part of it? Because I believe in the military, you don't question, you just do what you're asked to do. If those guys took that order on what the corner is telling them to do, then maybe they should, their, their sentence should be, they should, look in, they should be, I mean, give it a kind of, uh, maybe, a little chance. But that corner, they should not even imprison the corner or give him a life jail. They should bring him to the, to the, village, to the square. Let everybody watch when they kill that corner. Because this war is not something we have, we have to play with. There is, no, there is no such thing as a, a tamper justice with mercy. The corner should be killed immediately, instantly. We can't continue. This this war has taken so long. Millions of thousands of people have died. Billions of property have been have been wasted. And somebody is telling me we should we should have mercy upon people that is that is sabotaging. Those people are enemy of the state, and they should be killed if found guilty immediately. So that is my that is my if they say that the death penalty is justified, I said yes. In this kind of a thing, I would say there is no such thing as a human rights concerning them because they are not they, they are no more different from the Boko Haram. In fact, they are Boko Haram inside. Those people are the so-called Boko Haram inside. So they should be they should be treated as Boko Haram and not a, a soldier. Somebody telling me that 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 their, their colleagues we get we feel that uh, some their, their their member have been killed. If I'm a soldier, I won't feel that way. I, in fact, I would be happy that somebody who has been destroying our our who have been making this war prolonged has been killed. And another thing again is that uh, our military. I think uh, when I watched the video, those guys, uh, those people around taking over the town, shooting our boys, running away, and the the letter went went to the barrack and. Took, took some some military hardware. I was disappointed. In fact, I say that when, when, when I look at that video, I wept. I said, "What is the president still doing on in Asarok? He should then his resignation." This is my first time of saying that in my in my life. Because when I saw that, I wept. I said, "No, this is no more Boko Haram I used to hear on television on on uh, on, on newspaper. This has gone so wild. These guys are no more what we what we think they are." So it is important. Another thing again is that I found out that our, our military they are they are not using anything. I just saw our military using AK for the seven rifle. What is AK for the seven rifle? To compare what, what those guys are using. <laughs> and it seems like our, our our military has not gone into 21st century. They are still using the kind of weapon they used to fight the Afghan war. In fact, in, when, when I saw that video, when I saw them, I said, okay, no wonder they couldn't they couldn't uh, uh, defeat Biafra. That, that, no wonder they fought there for, for three years. Because what I'm seeing is not what a, a standard military can do. Our boys are there, but I think the government has to pump more money into our military. They need to they need to do so many things. There are so many things they need to apply technology into our military. So I think our boys are there and I and I and I, I, I praise them for what they are doing. I also pray for them that God will be with them and this war we will win it. Those enemies of Nigeria shall be put to shame. That is my that is my that is my take on this. And those people, those uh, people against against the state, they should kill them immediately. <laughs> all right. Um. Well, I'll, I'll first of all say an amen to your your prayer, and then uh, um I can see the chat box is really really banging. So much is happening. I think Hannibal has dropped a bombshell, and then everyone is asking him to thread with caution. But then I I won't let's let's hold that first issue of religion. When you hear about that, um, Joachim had actually made mention of um, why we're here. So, Joachim, let me just come to you now on this. Can you give us a proper, can you just continue from where you think we stopped? 
on the topic we're discussing. Yeah, yeah. Um, got this point. Got this point earlier about uh, yeah uh, about PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah. When soldiers have been um, fighting for a while, all sorts of things can happen to their psyche. All, all, all kinds of things can happen to them. All kinds of changes can happen to their, to their, to their, to their mentality. And these things can, can affect them in different ways. I don't know. I don't know what the army has in place to ensure that the mental health of its soldiers is properly catered for. Because battling, going to war, fighting, killing people, and seeing your own, your own, your own comrades also, also being killed, has has an effect on on, on, on the cycle. And I think that that may that may have played a role in what happened with the soldiers. It may have played a role. We don't know the full story. Um, and, um, and we have had, and we have heard little of of the of the official investigation that the army conducted. Could it have could 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 psychological issues issues from battle? Could they have also been been a factor? And if they are a factor, then it means that more things like this may happen in future. So you don't just want to to treat this particular case. You want to try to make sure that it doesn't happen again. But you have to find out what the main causes are. People have spoken about them not being properly equipped and all of that. That is a factor. The 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 scars of battle are also are also a big factor. And some scars are on the body, other scars are on the mind. And it's and it's the mental scars that take the longest to heal. If if the if the fighting ends and they go back to their families. How are they able to reintegrate into society? Do we have a situation where, because of a domestic disagreement, someone who was who was posted to 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 the border region to Cameroon to take Boko Haram suddenly that he's not? So all these things are issues, and I think that the mental health of these soldiers needs to be needs to be pushed pushed further further up, up, up the chain of importance because this is not just about 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 these these particular soldiers. There are other soldiers who are fighting. How do we know about their mental health and all the things that all the things that come with it? Because they have been a factor in the way they simply in the way they, in the way they in the way they attacked their their they are commanding officer. Yeah, so that was the point I wanted to make. Uh, okay, um, Carol, you also raised um, concerns about um, what um, 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 Ireland was saying, I, I believe. Um, let's just hear out before we before we move on, Carol. Um, no, it was when he was talking about the um, that America somewhat complicit in the fight um, against Boko Haram that. Um, that we should be careful of them and that uh, it's we can't really um, explicitly say that um, they've sent their soldiers or their people in to help and if they haven't found anything yet that doesn't mean that they are complicit um, so it's that, that's just the part that you agree with but then everything he said before it was quite quite very good okay um, so um, just within the week um, um, a former aviation minister Fami Fanika said um, he also talked about um, the embargo that was placed, was supposedly placed. I'm not sure about that, um, but you know, he said it was a covert uh, placement of an embargo. While um, Ireland is saying that that embargo has been in place since um, the days of um, military dictatorships. But then, if you look at the fact that um, there is even an effort, okay, yes, 9.3 million first, 5.7 million second. But then we're also aware that President Goodluck Jonathan has been granted the permission to get a loan of one billion dollars to procure arms uh, to help in the fight um, against uh, Boko Haram. Lumiwa, let me just come to you on this. I think, don't you think there is a form of um, commitment or drive, you know, to stem or <coughs> because most of the things that we've been saying here, why this guy is mutineered was because one, they have inferior firearms to what compared to what Boko Haram is using. 
Um, two, there is no morale in the military. They're not being paid properly or they're being sabotaged one way or the other. One billion dollars by the president. What do you say about that? Well, for me, I, I think the, the approach or the granting of the facility sounds like what Nigeria needs at the moment. But I, I'm quite skeptical about about the capacity of this um, government to effectively utilize that one billion dollars, given its antecedents with um, corruption and um, ineffectual leadership. Um, that said, uh, if it's properly utilized, I think it would do us a lot of good. I'm not seeing the one billion dollars being that uh, extremely useful in the fight against um, Boko Haram as it stands, but I see it as some facility that has the capacity to change the tide of our military um, forces or military force for, for good. Uh, so I'm looking at it from, from a longer term perspective. Um, buying ammunition isn't something you get from the shelf. It, it's, it takes a long, long process to get those things sorted. On the average, um, for you to buy pretty heavy ammunition, um, you place orders, um, go through some processes, and it could take as, as long as one, two, three years for some of those things to be delivered. So I, I think it's a good thing, although I have my worries about why Nigeria has to um, go, I mean, seek for a loan to, to purchase um, such heavy artillery. But this government has, has that culture of um, impunity and um, thoughtlessness in its, in its operations. So it's got a set of people who find it very difficult to think or perhaps to be proactive in, in finding solutions to basic problems. One would, I would have, I would have for, for instance, um, liked the situation where instead of you going to borrow a billion dollars from wherever you are getting it from, what happened to the old form of um, trade we used to have? What happened to the trade, trade by butter facility we used to enjoy in the past? How come we can't strike a deal and quantify um, barrels of crude oil with whatever ammunition you are going to get? I mean, no one's going to lose from that. And you're not going to be paying for interest on, on that facility. But let's even grant it that that facility has, has been I mean, approved. Can we use it effectively? Um, would the money be well utilized? Would it be judiciously used? Would it serve the purpose of which it was meant for? Does this government have the capacity to buy those ammunition? Um, what are the roadmaps? I mean, what, what is the blueprint that the government has for those uh, for the money? I mean, that's what we should be talking about. I'm afraid um, you'll be surprised in the next few years, another government will come and still tell us stories about how the $1 billion was used in the wrong way because that's Nigeria. That's what we've been used to for a while. And that's why some of us have been arguing that the problem we have isn't a problem of lack of ammunition. It's a problem of um, ineffectual leadership and misplaced priority from all structure of what makes up the Nigerian society. And um, for me, um, getting it right requires a holistic um, approach other than the faster um, um, mechanisms we are, we are pursuing. Good enough or fair enough we have the facility or we have been asked to get the facility. We can only hope and pray that that facility would serve the purpose for which it is meant for. That said, I just want to digress a little bit by getting back to the argument on the U.S. placing an embargo on Nigeria. Again, it all boils down to the fact that we aren't doing things right in this country. We have a government that doesn't, that doesn't understand basic diplomacy. Why would you, for God's sake, continue to be friends with a set of people that do not want to be friends with you? The U.S. from the world have been issue hasn't ever been the best of friends with Nigeria. I'm a student of foreign policy. Um, we've read that that much. You don't even need to be a student of foreign policy to understand that America doesn't want Nigeria to be what it should be. So why would you continue to cut a government that doesn't like you? Basic diplomacy should should tell you that you be friends with those who want to be friends with you. What happened to I mean the anti-American forces that we have in international politics? America isn't um, going to solve our problems. I would expect an anti-West term position from, from, from Nigeria. Unfortunately, again, because we have leaders who cannot speak with their voice and with their feet on, on the ground, we would continue to, to be um, puppets of, of the West. Um, West, unfortunately, led by a U.S. government that wants to be all conquering and all domineering. So, so I think that um, it boils down to two issues. Yes, we have the facility or we have the permission to get that facility. The question would then be, do we have the capacity to administer those funds? That I doubt. Well, Tom will also tell us that, but and again, let me just move forward. Um, well, thanks for making that and um, all the observations. But again, I have to say that um, some people can't hear you on the Hangout. Um, Caro can't hear you. Martins can't hear you as well. Um, they've been complaining quite earlier that they can't even hear you at all, so they might be in the dark as to what you've actually been saying. Um, but uh, actually, some can't hear you, so I also can hear you. But then, just in continuing, um, 
um, Godi is actually saying in the chat box now, I will also strongly advise that we use the chat box. Godi is saying that um, we should all remember that the intensity of this fight was because the Chibok girls were kidnapped, but prior to now, the fight has been fought with kid gloves. He says that uh, Boko Haram has raised down villages, hacked down kids, and all were buried in mass graves with the government doing nothing. Uh, he also adds that um, if they had started the fight quite earlier, we will not be where we are today. And then um, uh, Dan Sleeky, um, I mean Ireland, now says that um, sadly our government's corruption and greed comes first, even over the security of the situation. That comment is also um, uh, concurred with by Caro Oroboni. And then uh, Dan Sleeky also adds that um, he's asking a question this time around, that the media coverage of Nigeria's fight against Boko Haram is very poor. Well, I will beg to disagree with you on that because actually we've covered that extensively. Maybe you haven't been watching channels especially. I will speak for my own media house, but I know we have done this. We have called experts. We have spoken to the military hierarchy. We have spoken to the presidency. We have spoken to locals even. So we've ha actually done a very robust... Um, um, okay, you're asking for video footage. And I will refer you to our YouTube channel. It's on www.youtube.com forward slash channels web. I think you should subscribe and you'll get a notification of every video we post. Every video that goes on air, you get a notification because we upload that on YouTube and you see, you can even go there, it's an archive, you're going to see that, you're going to see all our coverages and all the things pertaining to Nigeria, not only um, Boko Haram and security issues. So, and then, and then in moving forward, um, Carol said, an administration that looks to unite Nigerians along ethnic and religious lines will win any war. But then, let's just continue. I also, again, would like to encourage people to use the chat box, use the chat box to drop your comments so that uh, we can come to them and also um, uh, talk about it so that everyone at Kurt can hear what you have to say. But then, um, Martins, I'll be coming to you on this now. The issue of um, the conspiracy, now talking about the embargo, be it a covert one or not, the American government has time without number through its emissaries, through its representatives, put their neck out saying that we want to help Nigeria fight Boko Haram. I think there is some form of a two-edged sword, should I say that, or um, or flip-flop in terms of policy. I don't know. What do you think would be driving such a thing? Looking at this time now that soldiers, again, you know, are mutineering because of certain you know, things that they feel should have been done but are not being done. How do you put that into perspective? You see, um, in my humble opinion, I think it's, um, there are three, there are various elements involved in the fact that, um, that come to play when it comes to the fact that the U.S. seem to have backed down um, from, I mean, when I say same in, in quotes, from they're supposed to fight terrorism in Nigeria. First of all, um, let's look at the public outcry. When um, this, the girls were kidnapped, um, and then the military decided to come into Nigeria, I mean, the U U.S. government decided to send its troop to Nigeria to support us. We saw a lot of public um, opinion. I mean, people who have authority and people who have got a platform and have also got followership tried to discredit the intentions of the U.S. government in um, its bid to support Nigeria. You see a lot of people like Tony Bakari came on air and categor made categorical and clear statements um, saying, look, we don't want your support, we don't want this, we don't want this because we know you don't have good intentions for us. Then secondly, you look at the military itself. The military itself, uh, in its hierarchy, felt it was a slap on them. Considering Nigeria is uh, the head of ECOMOG also, and we have high, the highest number of uh, UN, I mean, soldiers in the UN force, uh, peacekeeping force in Africa. And then they felt a little bit cheap, I mean, a little bit slighted to say, okay, how can we let a problem that we can actually solve um, among ourselves go um, get out of hand and then we we'll begin to cry out like other smaller nations to America asking them for help. And so these were all the things that actually played itself out. And um, 
there were various reports that the military itself was not really keen on giving them the kind of support they needed. I don't know how true that was, I don't know how verified they were, but there was a little bit of information, I mean, denial of information. So these whole things actually have a way of um, affecting countries, a country's foreign policy, you know, at every given point in time. The problem of Boko Haram is our problem, is a global problem. It's a local problem, but it's localized. I mean, in terms of, you see the link between IS, um, ISIS, you see Boko Haram's link with Al-Qaeda and the rest of it. So Nigeria cannot play like we are in an isolated, we are in our own village and not reach out, you know, or not stretch out, not, 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 not open our hands and arms to receive or embrace help when it comes from international communities. So I think, in my opinion, again, um, the U.S. has tried, and what we need to do, or what we, we should have done, would have been to open our hands, I mean, to open up and help and allow these people to really help us, because the U.S. government has been fighting terrorism right from time immemorial. This is the first time Nigeria is fighting terrorism. This is the first time we are facing terrorist attacks in Nigeria, in the history of Nigeria. And this is the first time we are having all this. I mean, you can imagine a country where everything has been so peaceful, everybody has living peacefully, and we've never ever had an opportunity, I mean, to doubt each, um, each other, to say, okay, no, this one is a terrorist, this one is a terrorist, and all that. Up till today, we are still looking at the fact that we are still saying that it is not Nigerians that are involved in these suicide bombing missions. It's, it's people from the J, it's people from Chad, it's people, because it is not part of our culture, it is not part of our history. So we need to let people who have got this kind of history, who have got this kind of background, who have got this kind of challenges in time past, we need to give them an opportunity to help us. We can't do it on our own. You know, I mean, we can see the victory recently when Jonathan started going to Chad and going to neighboring countries to talk to, their, to, 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 to their heads of government to support us. Because this is a transnational crime. It is not a crime that is just to us alone. It is something that has that that it is something that has to do with our borders. It is something that has to do with the the, the culture of the people around us. So we can't fight it on our. We need support of international community. Um, all right, um, Karoj, um, speaking about international community, like you said, Jonathan has quite moved to, you know, as a transnational crime, he has gone transnational and that we set up a transnational um, task force that will, you know, try to curb and erase Boko Haram. Uh, Gordy is asking if he can say something. Yes, Gordy, I'll come to you even though we've far outspent our time. But talking about the United States now wanting to help, Joachim says um, the United States wants to help. He agrees with you on that. But he says, but he adds that um, they will not be used as funds for money laundering and other nefarious activities. He, says, he notes that elsewhere official arms, arms deals are done by the central banks of the countries concerned, not hard currency carried in private jets. He asks why Nigeria's military spending also lacks accountability. Um, Island says Nigeria does not need handouts. Corruption eats at us from the inside out. And he says if Nigeria wants to help, they would refuse to do business with these leaders and openly condemn the government. An unstable Nigeria only benefits Western powers, he says. Uh, and then he also adds that he created the problem to wait for help from others will only prolong the situation. But then, um, Hannibal, you've been on and in and out. Um, you haven't said anything. Actually, you dropped a bombshell earlier, and then we decided um, like, we should stay away from that because it wasn't actually uh, the um, topic of our discussion. But then let me just come to you now. Thanks for joining, first of all. I know you are in Cyprus. How's it going, and what's your take on the issue we've been discussing for quite a while now? Everything is all right. Everything is all right. So what, what I have to say is that uh, the main problem we are facing in the military is internal sabotage. You know, it's, it's a known fact that, you know, that uh, we can win this war. Our gallant soldiers have all what it takes to win this war. But the greatest challenge we have is internal sabotage. If you take a critical look, Yesterday, you know, the vanguard uh, today, this morning, and Tribune, everyone saw what they wrote there that uh, the Colonel Corps coordinating 12 other soldiers, uh, they have they burned down our IPC, you know, and then they ran away into the bush, claiming that uh, it was Boko Haram that did that, you know. So, this is only it's only in Nigeria that you see this kind of things happening, you know. In a situation like this, there's no way we can win this war with such things in the military. 
Yeah. So if we, if we can get rid of those sympathizers of Boko Haram within the ranks of the military, we we'll win this war. Just for those boys, you see them, they are just cowards. They don't, if you look at the videos they play sometimes, they are cowards. They don't have what it takes to confront our gallant soldiers. But because of the sympathizers we have within the rank of the military, and these are top high ranking officials, they give orders, and you know the way they lead in the military. So they obey before command. You know, so my take in, in, the, in, the, in the issue of court martial is that those persons that are sentenced to death should face the full out of the law. I am 100% in full support of the death penalty because the you know, law must be obeyed. And if you if you keep talking about human rights and uh, all those sort of things, but lives were lost as well. You know, the lives were lost. You know, Boko Haram boys are dead with so many people, and they have you know they cause so many destructions, both physical and economically. You know, so we cannot begin to sympathize those few soldiers that are sabotaging the effort of the federal government. And women in Nigeria and international communities as well. You know, it is like what they said today. One one of those our personal carriers is costing one million dollars. You know, so imagine such persons that is that is creating this problem for us. If you call that one and they are sentencing him to death, some persons will still come and tell you that they have to obey human rights. As far as I'm concerned, there's no such human right. I am I am hundred percent and one percent in support. Those people will be sentenced to death. That's my take on that. All right, uh, sentence to death. Um, that's your own take. But then, uh, um, let's wait and see how it goes. They they, they already have lawyers, and then um, those lawyers are actually fighting their case uh, in in the law courts. So let's hope and see what happens at the tail end. But then, I'm um, just in wrapping up. Of course, um, we've far spent our time, even though we started a bit late. Um, God, you wanted to say something earlier. Let me give you the opportunity to say that before we begin to wrap up. Even though we have, okay, he's gone. Um, it was a new color, but he's gone. So, um, Godi, let's hear you out before we begin to wrap up this conversation. Okay. Um, I, I th what I want to say is, is that um, if we, our country has um, we so much uh, feed on lies. In fact, <laughs> I was just, you know, it just came to my head so this week, and I just came up with something like Nigeria has moved from Nigeria to Nigeria. You know, this is how we have transformed. And which is public, which is true. Check out the level of information that is actually being spread everywhere. Everything. Look at the trends. How things has happened. Um, this war, when it started, and when it became uh, after the level, the the uh, in 2011 and 2012, people, the politicians were feeding the people, and until now, lies that the war is because somebody, a northerner who was not happy with election result is the one who has um, made the country ungovernable. And it's kind of silly that this message is being aired until now when people are buying into all those things that this is the reason why Boko Haram is strong because someone did not like the election result and someone want to hold on to power. And a lot of the young people, Nigerians, we come out online and we say, oh, we don't want to be divided by ethnic lines or religions and stuff like that. But we go back and we sit and we feed off information that comes from illiterates that are leading the country. Because there are so many of them out there. And it is because we don't know what we have to believe in and what we should follow. We are keep looking at those people and keep fighting for them who, because they are in power, to tell us anything and we go with it. That is the reason why we are in this situation. How many times have government lied to the people? How many times they told us lies that they know where the girls are? They told us lies that they were girls who are going to be released in 30 days. They told us lies upon lies. The Americans came. The, the, the French came. The European Union, you know, everybody came to help to rescue the girls. They said they can see them in the Sambiza forest. They know it's just a matter of days. They, they want, everybody wanted to help. The question is, what has happened to that help? And why until now nobody is able to still locate and find those girls? It's simply because it is all lies. Do you think that the Americans will go into a war that they have no understanding of how, after their experience with Iraq and Afghanistan, that they would jump into Africa and fight a war that they really have no understanding how the whole thing is, knowing that the whole country is riddled with corruption and insincerity and lack of um, and a lot of um, mediocrity? Mediocrity is what has led us to where we are today. 
and we cannot deny that fact. That is supposed, that is basically why we are not winning this war because we spend money for the things which we are not supposed to spend spend money on. Look at the case of the the, the, the arms deal which is happening. The embarrassment is happening. I don't believe, and I say don't believe that this thing is for the arms because I mean we have the military. They know how they buy their arms. Does it mean that for all these years that the army has not been buying arms? If not for this war, how did they acquire the arms or did they get the arms that they are using to go fight war to support other countries? Where did they get them from? So they went there empty-handed and those countries handed them arms for them to use to fight the insurgents in those countries. And then in our own country, we do not have the arms and we are, you know, mere seven or nine million and then five million. Okay, if the case was that they were actually meant, money meant to buy arms, why is it that there are two individuals and an Israeli, the individuals that are not known? Why isn't it that people from the military hierarchy who would go and negotiate and test the armory and see that these are the things that we really need, instead of brandishing a list and sending somebody, do you send somebody to just go and buy ammunition that you would use to fight the war against the people who you know that they really have a lot of weapons, no matter, we don't know how they got them? And the question is, how did the Boko Haram people acquire those arms? So all these things are really uh, uh, entwined and you know, together. I, I'm not an expert in this whole thing. I don't know if really somebody, a general in the army who is responsible for armory and all those things is involved in going to buy arms. If, they, if the person physically goes to inspect and sees all these things, how it is done. But these are the kind of questions that pops up to my, from my head when I hear these things, you know, carrying money in private jets and going there. And some people, and some of us will have the tenacity to come and, you know, on social media and say, where I say that all those people who are credit, discrediting the, 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 the current president and all those things have no moral or have no thing to say. They will blame, we blame everybody but us. We blame everyone for any inefficiency but our own self. We find fault in every other thing that somebody didn't do well, but we do not see how we, what the mistakes we make. So my take on all those things is, is that the war cannot be won if there is no sincerity of purpose. And I've said this over and over. We should stop lying. If people lie and they find out they are lying, they should come out, they should be made to come in public, apologize and resign their position. People in presidency should stop lying to the people and tell the people the truth. The military has told the line. The military keeps lying about this whole thing. So if after all this time, I don't believe anything anymore they are saying. Now they are, it's not, it, it is not, if it is not maneuvering, tactical maneuvering, how many times have they come to Sambiza Forest? For God's sake, do you think Boko Haram will be waiting for 200 girls for the day the people will come and, and, and rescue them? If they are seeing them and all this work, so America, we should take let America out of this whole thing. America is not supporting anything. America is not. I don't believe they're coming. They, they, they don't want to help us, but they can would not come to help us if they see that our acts are not in order. All right, I'm glad you raised so many questions, and I hope those answers will come. And I hope in the future, or even presently, if we if people who are responsible, if they are being called upon to resign, I hope they do just and respect the um, uh, wishes of Nigerians or respect the interest of the country above their personal interest and do the right thing at the right time. But then we're about wrapping up. We've spent so much time. Um, Fidelis, I see you. Um, but I'm sorry, we, you didn't join this hangout in time and we've said so much, spent uh, so much time. Um, but I do acknowledge your visit here and thank you for joining the hangout. But then just in closing, um, what, in um, 2000 and 12, I spoke to the special assistant to president of social media and he said um, the president is a listening man uh, and he listens to Nigerians' requests on social media. So if you would make a request, if you would make a request to the president. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've taken care of Fidelis, and he can't come back to the hangout. So if you're to make a request to the president now on this issue, that is the sentencing of 12 soldiers to death over mutiny, what will that request be? Olumuyua, let me start with you. Well, I will ask Mr. President to exercise his powers. Okay, as hold on, I need to unmute your mic. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello, Victor? Hello? All right, now go ahead. 
Okay, I would ask Mr. President to exercise his powers as Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces. Look at the merits of the case, the extraneous and um, extraneous factors, and then um, take a balanced um, position and not allow sentiments to be cloud the sense of reasoning. And um, perhaps I would tow the part of pardon for those guys who have been found them um, unnecessarily um, victims of circumstances. I think it's too harsh a punishment given the circumstances surrounding their conviction. Martin? Um, first of all, I'd like to respond to what uh, Miro just said. I don't think there's any issue of pardon in contention here because, first of all, those guys are not guilty of mutiny in the real sense of his word. So, uh, so there is no issue of being seeking pardon for people who are not guilty of an offense they've not committed in the first place. Then, um, I think the law should just take its course and be interpreted in the right way. That what happened was just in what was, if you put every element together, was that does not show any form of murder or attempted murder. What happened, what the soldiers did was just a common assault. And assault in any part of the world or in any part of the world is not cannot be interpreted as um, is not punishable by death. Section the position of Nigeria is clear, as it were. And the and the criminal the criminal and penal I mean sorry, um, the criminal procedural act is also clear. You do not punish a man for offense that he hasn't committed. So um, the soldiers should be less loose as soon as they can, as soon as the appeal is put forward. And that's what I'm going to say. But then to the president, I think he should keep up the morale and help to make a formidable military. Give the military what they need to use and what they require and what they need to fight Boko Haram. That's all we require. Cool. Uh, <clears throat> yes, I like uh, other speakers have like uh, the actions of the soldiers soldier amounts to what could be regarded. A lot of people have cried opens and the sovereignty of the country belongs to the people. Uh, the people have spoken. So I think the president you listen and convert if those people the soldiers are found guilty they should be converted to something else uh, maybe less severe punishment for 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 for, for them but like one of the speakers the action amount to what could be regarded you know, I think that should be that should be a good question that could be resolved by maybe a cause of appeal um, looking at that kind of legal question, if that kind of actions the um, amounted to what could be regarded as mutiny. And another thing that I would like to make on is the issue of um, the transparency of, of, of the presidency. Um, since the, this um, administration of Good Luck Jonathan, the Nigeria has been so much divided. I think the presidency should come clean, try tell us the truth about the position because the issue of this arm base and some other things that are coming up I heard the Minister of Finance was saying some time ago that oh the military the army Nigerian Nigeria army needed had already arrived so I was like oh, the arms have arrived why why is the issue between the ones that are being you know going on in South Africa and so a lot of lies that are going on there that are a lot of politicization of, of of these um of, of these issues that we cannot really put telling lies and sometimes either the opposition or the presidency because we don't really trust Nigeria is so much divided the country is so much divided that a lot of you know mentality, sabotage other things that are going I think the president has that legal and moral standing to forge ahead and do what is right. Thank you. All right. Um. Thank you, Kunle. Um. Let's just now move on. Um. Caro, what would be your message or your request um to the president on this issue? Um. When when your foot soldiers are mutinying against you, um, you know there is a real problem. Um. And the president will want to ask himself how many more soldiers are on the verge of mutiny. Um. 
killing those soldiers will be counterproductive um, because you have, on one hand, you have your foot soldiers who will go out there to fight, and you have the citizens as well. So killing them will be counterproductive. Um, the the truth, the truth is, there's a broken relationship between between the citizens, who you also need in, in gathering intelligence and information about Boko Haram. There's a there's a, there's, 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 there's a disconnect. Um, there's a lost there's a, there's a mistrust between citizens and the security agents. And the president and the authorities of Nigeria need to work really hard in in mending that relationship because, fair enough, you can send people into the into into the forest and into the war fronts to fight, but you still also need the citizens. They need to bring the citizens together. Bring everyone, both Christians, uh, Muslims, Northerners, Southerners, on the same page. Because the moment all Nigerians are on the same page regarding Boko Haram, will have made um, a huge, significant step in defeating Boko Haram. So they need to bring everyone on board. Boko Haram is a Nigerian problem. Um, it's not. It's not about Muslims. It's not about Christians. It's not about any anything. It, this is a real, real, real problem. And it's unfortunate that the Nigerian government and um, and the politicians have, have have used politics so much that they have. Neglected the real problem, the real issue, and they and they've turned into politics so much that um, Boko Haram have advanced and they've they've done they've um, done a lot of things and grown beyond what they should have um, if the real issues um, were, were tackled in the first place. So the, the president should 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 they shouldn't kill these people because it will be counterproductive. Um, um, they need they need the citizens. They need everyone to come together. They need they need to sensitize people. They need to um, make sure that. People are not just arrested and, and, and kept in detention for no for, for, for no for no means. They need information from citizens. They need information from the soldiers. They need to look at the issues. They need to look at the root cause analysis. Why these soldiers meeting it in the first place? Because if they don't and they just kill these soldiers, then they will just be um, firefighting and nothing will happen. They will just be going over and over again. They need to look at the real issues. Why these soldiers meeting it and deal with those issues? All this money that has been spent on um, fighting insurgents for how many? Years now that we haven't really seen a lot. Um, um, if, if you compare what has been spent and, and, and the results that have been achieved, that it's it's not it's not relative. So we need to find out what exactly has happened to this money and deal with those issues. And if we deal with those issues, we'll be defeating Boko Haram. All right, Karo, um, thank you for that. I'm Joachim. I'll be coming to you now to get what your own um, request or um, closing statement will be. Uh, of course, in relation to those 12 soldiers and the action you expect the president to take. Uh, Joy Kim. Talking now, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, you know, the 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 military have the military have given their uh, but but I think but I think that killing killing those killing those men uh, may may not may not be the best way to get that to morale. Uh, for, for for the rank and file of the army. What is what I suspect, because I'm not sure, what I suspect is likely to happen is that they are senses are commuted, you know, um, maybe they are given fifteen or twenty years and then after about five years or so they are now let out if if they are if they are if their behavior is good. So I think that's more likely what is going to happen. This is not this is not um, the military era where we where we had coups and coup plotters everywhere running up and down. So it's not it's not quite the same thing. You have people who probably reacted out of out of anger and, and, and all of that. And while and while they are and while they should be punished, um, I just I just don't think it's going to be to the to the full extent. To the person of the law. Most likely, they'll be in jail for a while, and after that, then they'll be pardoned, you know, just to serve as a one. But more than that, I think I'd be surprised if they were actually to All right, um, jo Joachim, I hope your surprises doesn't get you unsurprised when yeah, an action yeah. is taken. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll uh, see. Uh, all right, so Hannibal, um, you've been spitting fire and brimstone. Let me hear your own take on this. What would be your message? What What would be your plea to um, his yeah, actually mother? For me, for me, discipline should be installed, you know, in the land of our military. Those guys, you know, they should serve some jail terms, you know, let's say 15 months, minimum 15, 15 years, you know, jail term to, to, to act as a deterrent, you know, for future occurrence. Because if we keep saying 
saying, you know, we should pardon this guy, we should pardon this guy. No one knows the undertone, the reason why they decided to shoot at their, their, their GOC, you know. So what do you do? Truth for the matter is that we should, you know, do what we have to do to make sure that this thing doesn't happen again. Because if we keep appealing to pity, we might as well, you know, pardon every, even the Boko Haram boys, you know, if we keep appealing to pity. But we should all know that there is kind of religious undertone, you know, to this fight that we are. Because it is very difficult to, de to, to defeat an ideology. And most of these people you see fighting for us in the, in the military, they are, they are, in one way or the other, believers of that kind of ideology. You know, you know how it is when you believe in an ideology. You know, you kind of sympathize with that ideology. You kind of, you know, want to do your be your bit to help. You know, to, to, to help for the sustenance of that ideology. That's why we say that they should not just be left out of the hood. You know, those guys should make to serve at least minimum for 10 years in jail, so that uh, it will act as a future deterrent to such things happening next time. Yeah. Because discipline is very important. If we have our military boys not disciplined, we, it means that uh, the sovereignty of our state is lost. You know, so anybody can come from anywhere and you know destabilize our, our dear country. So we should we should do everything that we can to to make sure that we have discipline and let them be let them serve 15 years minimum 15 years. And that, that's my take on it. They should not be key. Don't kill them. We don't need to waste life because they are still, you know, important. You know, they have, they have one or two experiences in the military. You know, so when they serve 15 years, you know, by the end of the day, they will have uh, other things to contribute to society. That's my take on it. Thank you, um, um, Hannibal. Let's come to you now. I'm glad you, you are the last person on the hangout, and so let's just hear from you. I think the guys need pardon. They need. Pardon. Your, your term, your term is reasonable, but then they cannot be executed. Because for me, if they execute this guy, then there is no difference between the, 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 the military that Boko Haram is executing and the one that the military is executing. There is no difference between them in this, in this aspect. The president should really look into this. He has had a lot of meetings with the, the, the service chief. Let us, let us just take it that the military is doing carrying out the routine exercise by following the law, prosecuting, looking at those who disobeyed and coming up with this. They can come up, there is no harm in coming up with a statement and say that considering the whole situation, that we are going to waive the death sentence at this moment. But then, that shouldn't stop them from looking at the reason why these guys did disobey. Because these people, as I said, they fight every day. Nobody, nobody is checking their mental situation. We don't even have that culture of going and having, like you know, I mentioned before, PTSD. Uh, 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 we, the guys are spending nights and days in the forest and in other so they should have that the military is checking their, ex, uh, uh, their, their, their situation, that um, the guys are mentally fit um, and, uh, to be able to face the challenges that they are facing. So the president should you know, wave, use his power to wave this. And I saw on the news the other day, um, former NBA chairman or president, Mr. Olisa Bakoba, is actually suing um, uh, the, or challenging the military for setting up this um, the, the, the tribunal or the, because that the guys were not qualified because you cannot be a judge in your own matter or something like that. I'm not a lawyer, but then he used something, you know, this kind of um, message was what was being put out there. So I really would like, you know, well, a lot of Nigerians who has the power to fight for this, to stop, to help stop this death. Because these guys, if they die, their death, I would say, I don't want to offend anybody, but I think that if really that they were fighting for the country and their mutiny was because of something, they were being misled, as we heard then, and they died. I think their death would be much more, you know, painful than the death of a lot of other innocent Nigerians that have been killed randomly by this sect. I'll put it this way. Thank you. Uh, all right, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you all for joining the Hangout. Muiwa, you are um, in a faraway land, but then you were still able to join. Uh, Martins, you also. Um, Kunle, all of you in faraway lands. Um, just Joachim and I are in Lagos, Nigeria. Hannibal, as well as God, all of you. Thank you very much. 
uh, for joining me. It was a wonderful time. I had a really wonderful time discussing this. But just before we go, um, I'll just go back again to the chat box where Carol said laws must be obeyed. Yes. How about those that stole the money meant for the military? Why has the law against corruption not been obeyed? He adds that this, that statement about making Nigeria ungovernable was made by Keita Lawa. He was a PDP member when he made, made the statement, and I think he is still a PDP member. Oh, well, Karo and um, Ambasaki are actually saying that they can hear uh, Muiwa because they complained earlier on. And then Hannibal goes on to say everyone is saying they should be pardoned. What about the issue of the um, colonel setting our armored personal carrier ablaze? Should that be pardoned as well? Joachim, however, responds and says that is a bit different. That is sabotage, he says. And um, Hannibal says it is pertinent to know that these guys mutinying all in support of the cause of Boko Haram. We need to set the record straight to avert future occurrences and to install discipline in our military. Cairo, however, says we hope this statement can be passed across the board to all politicians too. The actions of these thieving politicians and military bosses in the first place are the reasons the soldiers mutinied. Um, Hannibal says, yes, exactly, it should be uh, passed across board. Well, it was a very interesting discussion, a very nice time we had, except, of course, for when uh, Fidelis of Paraku were threatening against me, on the hangout of which I had to um, take a necessary action against <laughs> him and took him out of the hangout. But then it was all good. I really enjoyed everything, and I thank all of you once again for joining this channel's being some Google Plus Hangout. Uh, for now, I'm Victor Matthias. Thank you for joining. Until we see you next time. Thank you.